Hi guys, today I've got another arcade PCB up for repair, but this time it's going to be a little different because it's going to be a rather quick but I hope yet a very informative video because I already hooked this board up for a, a short test and I noticed that this is the perfect case of an instant uh, visual diagnosis, meaning that just by uh, looking at the screen when I fired up the board I could immediately tell which parts of the board were failing and um, to show you what I'm talking about I'm just going to hook it up again and let you take a look. Okay I hooked up the board to my uh, test setup over here and I'm going to turn it on in a second. Um, what you're going to see is that the game will actually be running but there's um, some graphics problems with the board. Um, to be more precise, you're going to notice that the colors will all be way off, uh, will look kind of funky, will be glitching around. And um, this, um, the looks of the color uh, issue is actually uh, very um, specific for a certain chip to fail on the arcade PCB. And um, it is not a specific problem of this board, which is a uh, double dragon um, jammer board but uh, can uh, happen in many arcade games because they are um, uh, actually all based um, on the same um, architecture in uh, that regard. The chip I'm talking about is actually in this case is this guy over here but um, I'll tell you more about it later um, and again uh, just before I um, fire up the game the purpose of this video is um, is to enable you to recognize this specific problem and do this instant to to be able to make this instant visual diagnosis which should actually um, help you in your own arcade repairs should save you a, a lot of time and um, if the diagnosis is right um, you'll be able to fix a non-working board in about five minutes okay so let's turn on the game and look at the screen Okay, this text is blue, it should be white. Okay, you see that the, that the graphics are mostly blue and there's some green color glitching around. It had some uh, funky edges over here. And now you can see uh, the in-game graphics, which are uh, mostly looking blue. Okay, so you can actually, even if there's no pixel on the screen that is, just, uh, that is actually displaying the color that it is supposed to, you can still um, see that the graphics um, are actually quite all right. You can see um, that the sprites, that the backgrounds, that the text displays you know, all seem to be okay. So uh, this is not... Um, really a problem of the graphics but you um, much rather um, get the impression that the PCB um, is uh, somehow selecting the wrong colors um, to represent the graphics so to speak and um, you know talking in terms of RGB um, actually when we fire up the board let me just start it again. Um, we get the impression that there's that there's blue, obviously, and um, that there's sometimes it doesn't show it at the moment, but there's sometimes too much green on the title screen here. It had some red edges going on over here. Now it's pretty much all blue. So talking RGB, um, there seems to be. The blue might e actually even be okay, but there sometimes seems to be too much green on the title screen, then the, gr then the green disappears completely. And also on the title screen we had some red, we don't see much red now. Uh, so there seems to be actually a problem with the colors, with the color selection that uh, is supposed to represent the graphics. And um, what that means is that there's actually not a, a problem with the graphics, but with the color palette. 
Uh, and that's uh, when we're getting back to our instant uh, visual diagnosis. Um, the board seems to suffer from a palate issue, and that is most likely being caused by the palate rams or palate prom chips, which in case of the double dragon board uh, are those two guys over here. Okay, so let me explain to you uh, what I mean by color palette. Um, a typical arcade board um, of the 80s and 90s cannot really freely select uh, for every pixel on the screen uh, any uh, RGB combination color that it wants, but it's um, mostly, because it's mainly 8-bit architecture, uh, at least uh, for the earlier games, it's mostly limited um, to 8-bit um, uh, data buses, so it is um, uh, mostly uh, the games will be mostly limited to 256 colors. Um, as in the case of the Double Dragon PCB, uh, we already looked at this page of the schematics uh, in an earlier repair. This is actually where the graphical data is coming in from the um, background graphics, from the text overlays and the sprites, and it's gonna um, it's gonna get mixed together over here. And uh, the graphical data is output over here, which is an, uh, in this case an 8-bit uh, data bus. And this uh, this data is not really sent directly to the screen, but it's uh, sent to those two chips over here, as you can see. And those two chips are uh, the pallet RAMs. So what do the pallet RAMs do? Um, for each of the possible colors that are coming here from the graphics, which are uh, 8-bit, 256 possible colors, it will uh, look into a, a, a sort of an internal table and it will pick uh, the RGB values for those specific colors. And in the end, we get, uh, that's what we're seeing up here, that's actually the output uh, of the color ramps, we're getting a 12-bit a uh, line out of there. Um, and uh, four bits are representing uh, each the colors red, green and blue, so RGB. So we have four uh, bits for red, four bits for green and four bits for blue. So we're getting a 12-bit uh, uh, color range, so to speak. Uh, and 12 bits um, allow you to have um, 4096 possible combinations. So from this uh, page of the schematics we can see that the uh, Double Dragon board is actually to display is actually able to display 256 different colors which it can select uh, from a range of uh, 4096 colors. Okay, as I said the base architecture is almost um, actually uh, always the same and I'm gonna um, demonstrate this on some other arcades uh, schematics later in the video but it's uh, all, uh, almost always the case that there's the graphical data coming into the RAMs to the pallet RAMs and um, those pallet RAMs are outputting the RGB values um, according to the color input those RGB values, 12 bits up here, are getting fed into a buffer and they are stored uh, in, this, uh, in this buffer. And um, from this buffer they are being output to a resistor network for all the three components. And here we are finally reaching our RGB outputs. So um, the color, um, the pa excuse me, the palette uh, RAMs can always be found in the schematics near the RGB outputs. The RGB outputs are almost always to connected, uh, are always uh, connected to some resistors, to some resistor networks which are connected to uh, several bits for e representing each color which are coming from this uh, buffer over here and uh, the buffer is fed from uh, the pallet RAMs, which re get their information from the graphics uh, data lines.
Okay, here, here we have uh, another example um, of arcade schematics I just ram randomly picked from my uh, collection. Uh, and this is the um, schematics for a Mortal Kombat uh, Gemma PCB. And what we're seeing here is, um, uh, is actually uh, the output pins, red, green and blue. And um, as with the Double Dragon board, they are connected to resistor networks. Um, but in this case, it looks like it's um, uh, actually uh, five bits for each. Uh, so there's five uh, uh, data lines coming in for each of the colors. So there's actually uh, the possibility. So we have uh, 15 bits in total. So uh, the uh, Mortal Kombat PCB can actually select uh, certain colors from a range of uh, 32,000 colors, so it uh, has a better color variety actually than uh, the Double Dragon. But um, the architecture is all the same. Fit five bytes from red, green and blue are coming out of those chips here, which are buffers again. Uh, there seem to be uh, another set of buffers down here that they're coming from, and uh, they actually originate uh, through those data lines here from those two chips over here and those two chips are um, 625 um, uh, sorry 62256 uh, uh, those are RAM chips just uh, like uh, so these are the pallet RAMs in the case of the Mortal Kombat PCB Okay, and this is uh, another uh, s uh, set of schematics. This is actually from uh, an older board. This is from a Frogger PCB. And we are looking, we're do just doing the same thing. We're looking for the outputs, red, green, and blue. They are over here in this case. And um, the architecture is actually a bit different because there's actually only 8 bits, which uh, can actually produce uh, the outputs for red, green and blue. So the total amount of possible colors that the Frogger PCB is able to display um, is actually only uh, 256 colors. And um, we also see the resistor, uh, the resistors over here. There's actually, in this case, there's actually not a buffer in between, but it's uh, direct, the resistors are directly connected to this chip over here, which is a PROM chip. So this, in case of uh, the, the older Frogger PCB, uh, what is used is a uh, pallet PROM, which is this chip over here. Okay, and getting back to our Double Dragon board and to our repair, um, we already established that there's actually two pallet RAM uh, chips on the board. So which one uh, should we replace? Which one will be bad? Well, you could actually replace both of them and you will probably fix the problem. Um, but in this case, we get a little hint uh, from the board uh, because um, when we look um, at the data lines that are used to represent the colors, we can see that the bits 1 to 3 are used for the red, 4 to 7 are used for green, and 8 to um, 11 are used for the blue colors and if we're looking down here uh, we can see that 0 through uh, 3 is over here which is red these are the red uh, data lines 4 through 7 is over here which is green and 8 through 11 is over here which is blue so we have a uh, red uh, green blue and if we're thinking about uh, what we saw on the screen then we had the impression that maybe, uh, well, the red, uh, there was any red barely visible uh, on the uh, title screen of the game. There was some um, red edges over here, but that's uh, pretty much that, well, that was pretty much everything. The green was uh, glitching out on the title screen. It was sometimes completely green. Uh, then the green was like shifting horizontally and dis disappearing uh, again completely. So there was uh, also probably a uh, issues with the green. The blue seemed to be kind of all right. You could actually, while the game was running, you could actually see uh, all of the graphics which are pretty much uh, at that point uh, all that was left of the color was the blue. So the blue might even be okay. So what I would do um, in this case is actually start 
by replacing uh, this pallet RAM chip over here and see uh, if we fix the issue. So um, this guy would actually be the RAM chip for uh, the red and the green and this smaller guy over here would actually be um, the chip for the uh, blue colors. And um, well, even if you don't have the schematics of the board, you should be actually able to figure out um, where um, the pallet RAM chips or the pallet prompts are because uh, they are probably always somewhere near the edge connector because that's where the RGB signals are going to. Uh, there's probably going some lines over here. I think these are the resistor networks for the RGB signals. Uh, these are the two uh, RAM chips. There's the, uh, the, uh, there's the buffers around here. So it should always be some RAM or PROM chips which are actually connected or very close to the resistor networks of the um, RGB outputs which are near the edge connector. Okay, I removed the RAM chip and uh, put a socket in. And um, just to show you, this is how the game actually looks. Um, without the RAM chip. It's also um, very glitchy, looks all white and yellow. So if you saw this um, problem primarily, it would also uh, suggest, um, of course, a uh, pallet RAM failure. So I have a new chip over here. I'll just put that in to the socket like this. Okay. And the graphics look all glitchy. But don't worry, it should be fine in a second because because it is a RAM chip and we put it in while the game is running, it certainly isn't filled with any valid information, but I suppose we either have to restart the game or uh, maybe just wait a bit because I think the game switches pallets while it is running. Okay, yeah, here we go. So the title screen is good. I think it just switched the palette and also when the background is flashing on the title screen in the Double Dragon game, this is done by altering the palette. So yeah, and here we go. The game looks great. <laughs> so another game fixed. And um, well, I hope uh, as always that this uh, video was helpful to you. Please, if you have any questions, um, if my uh, explanations uh, weren't uh, well understandable, please don't hesitate to uh, comment below the video. I'll uh, try to answer all your questions. And I certainly hope that uh, this case of a uh, instant visual diagnosis uh, will help you with your arcade repairs in the future. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.